Okay folks, this is going to be a little bit different fish report than I've done so far as you can tell. Um, not the normal on stream outdoor background. I'm actually inside in our studio doing the fishing report. The reason is it's cold, it's snowy, the wind's howling, it's blowing. But more importantly, the reason for this report is, like I said, I mentioned before I won't do them as often because conditions generally don't change as much during the winter. Well, conditions still can and do change quickly. And this is exactly what happened. Uh, over Christmas, a weather front came through the area and dumped massive amounts of rain. Enough rain that the Salmon River now is at flood. So I want to just give everybody a heads up. The water is incredibly high. Uh, I'm going to be posting some, I got some pictures that Rick went took some photos of the river. And I'll put these up in the report so you can get an idea of what's going on and a few photos of what's what's happening. The water came up uh, Christmas Day the release was 750 which is a nice release for winter steelhead fishing we can still fish that 750 is nice. However during the day the river went to about 1400 on top of uh, at the Pineville gate so we had about 750 worth of release and 750 worth of runoff which is a lot of runoff. That night, the uh, release from the dam ultimately went to 4,000 CFS. So between runoff and the release from the dam, uh, the following morning, uh, the river was running at, at 4,900. Basically, we're almost at 5,000 CFS. That's flooded. That's just dangerous to get near. There's hardly any bank even to stand on. So that's really high, high water flows. The We haven't seen a 5,000 um, flow on this river in a few years. So it's been a while since we had this big um, water event. So I guess you can say the drought is over. We're done with drought conditions. The surrounding creeks up in that area were also very, very high. Um, I know uh, some of the uh, sandies up top were close to 5,000 um, CFS on their own at one point. They got very high. They're coming down right now as we're talking. They're almost at fishable level, so they're coming down. The Salmon River, I suspect, when it starts to drop, is going to drop quick. It generally does drop off very fast. However, you'll probably see it go from the 5,000 at the Pineville Gauge down to 4,500, which I think is where we are right about now as we're talking and drop down to and then hold for a while around 12 1800 TFS. You can fish it but with fly tackle it's pretty tough. Uh, I like it fly tackle. I like to have about a seven a winter steelhead fishing with fly tackle. I like to be 750 to 335. That seems to work good for us. Uh, during the winter it's hard to get flies down uh, where the fish are sitting when the water is over 750 and make a good presentation. During the spring, we don't care. We'll fish in pretty high water. So that's basically what's going on. Western New York, on the west end of Lake Ontario, same thing. Not as severe. We had a lot of water. Our creeks got a really good blowing out, a really good cleaning. I'm hoping to see some fish when things settle down. Uh, around the Oak Orchard area, I'll give you a heads up on how that works. The creeks all come up really quick. Where we fish in the Oak, usually get about two days. 24 48 hours of good fishable water flows before the muddy dirty water hits so by the time you see this I suspect the oak is going to be high and it's going to be dirty it'll take about a week for that clarity to come back where the salmon river is definitely going to be off color because there's just so much trash in the river that it's going to take a few, you know but it's going to be clear enough to by the time its flows are clear enough to fish it'll be um yeah, the clarity be good. The biggest concern for the Salmon River is going to be trees and debris. When we haven't had a 5,000 release like this in a few years, there's a lot of trees that are coming in, a lot of debris in the water that's being washed through, and that makes things really dangerous. So you're going to want to wait until the waters get down to a good safe level, and then have your head on a swivel because you're going to find obstructions, trees, and stuff like that that where they probably weren't before and your pools are going to shift a little bit too so when you get on that water and you start fishing your normal runs fish from top to bottom through the run pretty carefully because you ex expect them to be rearranged a little bit 
that's the big thing is is we just got a lot of high water on the salmon river it's dangerous right now as i'm recording this video to go on i would definitely not recommend it and when you head up definitely check the water gauges check water line and uh see see what the water flows are like to make sure they're out of at a, a uh, flow level that you're comfortable with the other thing is is when you get there be mindful that there's going to be the that whole river's changed so there could be some log piles where there wasn't and some of your log piles could be gone so that's the other thing to, to keep in mind but it'll take my feeling is right now um today is uh i'm this will be posted probably december 27th the Water flows probably will be about a week before they get down to probably the 750 or less that I personally like the winter steelhead fish in. So it's going to take a little bit for this to come through. On the plus side, all the rotten salmon carcasses are gone. All the garbage is, yeah, the river just got cleaned. A lot of the debris along the side, the silt, everything's gotten flushed out. With this big blast of water, it's definitely going to pull in some new steelhead. So the, the steelhead and steelhead fishing in the Salmon River has gotten a complete reboot. Same thing with all your um, streams in the west end of the lake. It's a re reset button. All the garbage has been cleaned out. The river's got a nice scarfing, nice flushing. It's going to just kind of recharge the fishing. It'll pull a bunch of new fish in, kind of freshen up the fish that's been in there. So the, the upside of this high water is it's going to give a nice rejuve to the fishing. With winter fishing we do need some high water cycles to keep the fishing fresh. So that's what's going on folks. Um, like I said I'll have some pictures posted to show you what's going on. A couple announcements. I mentioned in the last video we are doing a spay casting clinic. Uh, this uh, the end of next summer August 28th 29th. Um, each day is a class. It's a separate class. So we're doing two classes. You can do one on the 28th or you can join the one on the 29th. Uh, we've already gotten some interest. We are putting together an email list. So call and say, hey, I'm interested. And then we'll probably send out an email back in June saying, all right, um, the COVID thing, the travel thing, everything else, we're comfortable. Let's start filling the dates, confirm your dates. So that's the plan right now. I'll talk more about the class as we go. It's uh, designed for somebody just getting started, somebody rusty. We can accommodate an experienced caster that having a few problems with the casting strokes or styles of casting too. So it'll be a, about um, four to six hours and pretty intense uh, with a five to one structure to um, a student ratio. We got some uh, fly time videos coming up, so keep your eyes open for that. So like I said, hit the old subscribe button. And also, for the people that subscribe to the channel, welcome. Glad to have you on board. And I hope we don't disappoint you and keep you keep enough stuff coming to keep you interested this winter. As for winter, um, it is kind of curious. Much down in the comments, I'm curious to see who like the winter steel, who likes winter fishing. If you like to do it steelhead, winter steelhead fishing. If you like to do winter trout fishing, or you just like to spend your uh, winter uh, time flies and fixing gear. So mention that down and tell us what you like to do during the winter with your fishing. As always, um, until next time. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch up with you later. See you, folks.